Hello everybody. So, uh, we continue with the discussions of uh, finding out the hydrodynamics of flow using the um, homogeneous flow model. As I have already mentioned, the homogeneous flow model, it is given by this particular equation for, for, for different cases. This is the general equation when both the phases are incompressible. You can just use this equation and we found out that our only hitch was to find out the two phase friction factor. So, there are as I had mentioned there are two ways of estimating the, the, free, uh, the two phase frictional pressure gradient. One particular way was to express it in the form of just the way we, uh, we express single phase pressure gradients in the same way it can be expressed as 2 f t p by d g square v t p. This is one particular way and here we find out F T p, where F T p can be defined in terms of Reynolds number R E T p, right. The other way which is quite commonly done for macro systems is that one more thing I had forgotten to mention which I should be mentioning that well it is very good that you, you can find out F T p in terms of R E T p and then you define for, for R E T p you need to find out the mu T p and for finding out mu T p there are large number of expressions. But once you have found out R E T p in order to find out F T p from R E T p we need some particular relationships. Now, we all know that for laminar flow rather for, for a single phase for laminar flow we have this equation for turbulent flow we have this either we can express it in a Broch's type of correlation or we can take a constant two phase or rather constant friction factor. The same thing is adopted for macro systems as well. In those cases also if it is uh, if the R E T p from a suitably averaged mu T p is less than 2100 we use this equation greater than 2100 we either use this equation or we adopt a constant value. But in micro channels it is very important for us to realize the thing which I had mentioned in my last to last class was that usually we find that for macro systems and even for liquid flow in micro systems the friction factor is independent of the or rather it is not expressed in terms of the relative pipe roughness for laminar flows. We take into account the epsilon by d fa factor only for turbulent flows. On the other hand when we have come down to two phase flow in micro channels what we realize? We realize that the flow as per Reynolds number the way it is calculated and the critical Reynolds number is decided the flow is mostly laminar in micro channels. But wall effects are extremely important. This I have been discussing since the beginning of the of this lecture series. So, therefore, definitely a, a proper representation of the friction factor in two phase flow through micro channels cannot be represented by this particular expression. So, on the contrary people have tried to use the expression which has been proposed by Churchill for single phase flows just by rep replacing your single phase Reynolds number with the two phase Reynolds number and we get F FTP. This particular equation this is applicable for the entire range of laminar turbulent and transition and it is this is preferred as compared to this particular equation. We can also use a Kolebrook equation we find that for both the equations they take into account a epsilon by d factor and therefore, by using either of the equations we can account for the relative roughness in laminar flow. Well, so this was regarding the finding out the friction to two phase friction factor and then estimating the frictional pressure gradient. Well, there is another way as I was telling th this is very conventionally used for gas liquid or liquid liquid flows in macro systems is to define a two phase multiplier phi square and this phi square it, it is basically the ratio of the two phase frictional pressure gradient to the ratio of the single phase pressure gradient. Now, this single phase can either be a liquid or a gas if a gas liquid mixture is flowing in a pipe. If we consider this as a liquid then this is denoted as phi L square and 
if we consider this as a gas, then we make it phi g square, right. Now, here I have got one particular point of caution. I have estimated the, we, I can estimate the single phase frictional pressure gradient on the assumption that the liquid which was flowing in the pipe is now flowing alone in the same pipe. Or in other words, what was the amount of liquid which was flowing in the pipe? The amount of liquid which was flowing was g into 1 minus x. Now, I assume that this g into 1 minus x amount of liquid is flowing alone in the pipe as a result of which the frictional pressure gradient for the liquid phase flowing alone is given by 2 f l by d g t p square into 1 minus x square. This is the effective mass flux of the liquid portion into V l, right. I can also assume that the entire gas and liquid mixture is flowing alone in the pipe. Fair in this particular case, I would like you to note that when the entire gas plus liquid mixture is flowing alone in the pipe, it automatically appears to one that it is just liquid flowing in the pipe and we are trying to find out the frictional pressure gradient. So, naturally what does it imply? It implies that since the same liquid with the same properties are flowing, the frictional pressure gradient should be the same, no matter whether the, uh, the, uh, the only liquid portion is flowing alone or whether the entire mixture is flowing through the pipe. If the liquid portion is flows, then it is g into 1 minus x weight fraction which is flowing, whereas if the entire mixture flows, it is the g fraction which is flowing, right. Now, we find that although the same liquid is in contact with the pipe wall, but nevertheless the expression of frictional pressure gradient changes for the two cases. For one particular case, we have this expression for the other particular case, we have this particular expression. Okay. And just note, so accordingly if, if my single phase friction rather single phase pressure drop is liquid and gas flowing alone in the pipe, I define phi L, phi L o square which gives me d p by d z frictional two phase by d p by d z frictional entire mixture flowing as liquid in the pipe. And if the liquid portion is flowing, then my correction factor will take into account my frictional pressure gradient when the liquid portion is flowing alone in the pipe. For this particular case, this is the expression. For this particular case, this is the expression. So, from this expression immediately you find that the first difference is the mass fluxes are different. But along with that, try to understand or try to notice if you observe these two expressions, you will find that even I have denoted the friction factors in a different way. In this case, it was F L, in this case, it was F L O. Now, should these two be different? Both the cases, say any liquid or say water is flowing through the pipe, okay, mass fluxes are different. But if the mass fluxes are different, should the friction factor be also different? Let us think about it. What is friction factor? Can you tell me? This is a function of Reynolds number. What is Reynolds number? It is, it can be expressed in this particular way. So, if it is liquid Reynolds number, then it is going to be the liquid viscosity and accordingly G has to be defined. Now, suppose I define the F L in this particular case then naturally it should be a function of R e L and then what is this R e L? This should be d g into 1 minus x by mu L. On the other hand, if I am dealing with the entire mixture flowing as liquid, then in this case F L O, this is a should be a function of 
the entire mixture flowing as liquid or in other words this should be a function of d g t p by mu l is not it. So, for you get we find out that the single phase friction frictional pressure drop it because for the two cases the mass fluxes are different it not only affects the mass flux term here it also affects the friction factor because friction factors are finally they they are function of reynolds number which also involves the mass flux so therefore this this must be take kept in mind when you are trying to derive all those things one point of advice from my side is that when you are deriving these particular expressions start from the basics and do not jump steps that is going to be much more convenient for you right so so therefore we find that we can define in all four two phase multipliers one is phi l square which i have already written down with the liquid portion flowing alone in the in the pipe the other is the entire gas liquid mixture flowing as liquid through the pipe right similarly we can define phi g square and phi g o square okay now remember one thing when we are dealing with adiabatic two phase flows with more or less comparable proportions of the two phases we go for phi l square and when we are dealing with change of phase where at the inlet we have a saturated or a subcooled liquid or maybe a saturated vapor and as it is flowing through the pipe change of phase occurs due to some amount of heat flux or maybe due to some amount of pressurization then in that case it is often more convenient to use the phi square yellow part. Now, how to it is very good that I, I, I could define the I can find the two phase friction factor in terms of single phase friction factor provided I know phi l square. So, what if what is or rather how to find out phi l square. Now, people have found out or rather the first person who had suggested this a uh, relationship to find out the two phase multiplier is known as Lockhart and Martinelli this was the, the two researchers they are quite well known and we refer to them very frequently they obtained a relationship or they found out that phi l square or phi g square it has some particular relationship with a parameter which they defined as x square which is nothing but sorry it is nothing but phi l square by phi g square. So, therefore, what does it reduce to it reduces to the ratio of the single phase friction factor of the gas and the liquid phase and you find that this is a known quantity. You can also find it out from even without doing experiments you can find out the single phase friction frictional pressure losses right and people have found out particularly Lockhart and Martin was the first person who found out that the relationship between these two should exist. He proposed a graphical relationship of this form where you can find out that these relationships they have they have proposed four sets of graphs depending upon whether the liquid and the gas were in turbulent flow or in laminar flow. So, depending upon this they suggested four different graphs these were the graphs for phi l square and this was the graph for phi g square right. Subsequently Chisholm he, de uh, he developed one particular analytical rather he proposed an analytical expression to find out phi l square from x and the relationship which was proposed it is a very well known relationship. So, I would like to write it down it expresses phi l square from x as a function of some particular empirical constant c where different values of c were proposed 
depending on whether the liquid and the gas are in turbulent flow or in laminar flow. You would realize that this particular combination with liquid turbulent and gas laminar is, is usually very rare and for multi rather for two phase flow in micro channels, we often come across the liquid gas both laminar where C is 5 or in other words the liquid laminar and the gas turbulent where it is 12. Okay. But usually we come across this particular core uh, rather this is much more applicable for micro channels. Now, other than this what people have done is they, they have found out that more than Chisholm correlation it is not always applicable and some other correlations are much more applicable for micro channels. Now, very commonly used correlation again which has been suggested by Mishima and Hibiki there is a slight difference in the constants for circular tubes and narrow rectangular channels with a very less gap between the two phases. And the important thing again I would like to say it is just important to, to remember the functional form of the relationships rather than the exact constants. In case we ask questions on this in your assignment or in the, in the final examination then this relationships will be provided few expressions you should be remembering. For example, the value of C is important, the just the Duckler and the BTN Wally mu T p was important, a few of this particular relationships it is you should be remembering. So, therefore, this is a very well known relationship and the important part of this is this suggests that C actually it decreases with decrease in diameter is not it. So, this is what is important in this particular expression it shows that C actually decreases with decrease in diameter and so therefore, it might suggest that suppose we go for very small channels and then in that case it can happen that C can almost become equal to 0 which implies that the two phases they are flowing side by side with perfectly laminar type of flow. Okay. And also I would like to tell you that the reduction of C naturally implies that the pressure gradient it decreases with decrease in pipe diameter and that is what our experimental results also suggested. There are much more complicated relationships to find C and they have been provided definitely you do not need to go through all these relationships. It just to, to let you know that well other relationships also exist. But there is one thing which I would like to like to discuss before I move on to the next topic that is the expression of C for oil water flows. Now, for oil water flow we find that if we consider the single phase liquid flow for laminar cases what do we get? We get delta P by L this is nothing but equal to 32 mu L into U by d h square for non circular channels where d h is the hydraulic diameter. So, in this case delta p is the pressure drop over the length L mu is the dynamic viscosity and u is the superficial velocity of that particular fluid. Now, I have something to say about this particular term superficial velocity before I end this class just remember this particular term. Now, in this case if you write down x which is root over of minus d p d z of one phase divided by minus d p d z of the other phase. So, for gas liquid cases it was gas it was g here and in this case it was l here. So, for this particular case it should be oil here and it should be water in this part a here. So, therefore, this automatically it gives mu w u w s by mu o u o s root over. Okay. And what people have suggested is for this case the two phase multiplier phi, phi w square has been expressed as 1 plus c x plus c x square where c has been obtained again in the form 
either Chisholm's correlation is good, but a better correlation is which again gives C as a sorry exponential minus 319 into d h. So, in this particular expression C was given. So, therefore, it, it shows that for larger pipe diameters the value of C reduces to the Chisholm correlation and for smaller pipe diameters we find that C is a more or less uh, rather it, it is an exponential function of the hydraulic diameter. Well, there are several other relationships also. For example, uh, people have also suggested that for uh, slug and annular flows, but you need not remember so many things. It is just to show you the, the innumerable effects which people have uh, put behind this just to get a suitable expression to find out the pressure gradients. Where, they, where it was observed that alpha is a function of micro channel properties and beta it is it is it, it was more or less similar for the micro channels used. So, this this was observed to be 0.26 for the quartz micro channel used by Salim and point three for the glass micro channels and this was more or less it was 0.8 for both the micro channels. Anyhow, so these things the important things which I wanted to tell you among all these things were that for that first thing is the concept of two phase multiplier and why phi L square and phi L square are different and then how phi L square or phi G square is related to x square. And it is also important to know that when we are dealing with boiling two phase flow or condensing two phase flows when, when a single phase is uh, starts flowing and then changes its phase then it is we usually use phi L square. When a two phase mixture is flowing under adiabatic conditions with comparable proportions of the two phases we use phi L square. And usually this is related to x square with the functional form as shown here. And usually this functional form it is not always very good for micro channels. So, an, a modification of those functional forms incorporating the hydraulic diameter has been used for the case of micro channels. Well, the, I would like to say that apart from using C there are also a large number of other type of correlations which have correlated phi L square with x and they are a different type I would not be going into the details and I am already running out of time. But if anybody is interested that person can refer to the paper of Barreto et al of 2015 and go and look for the correlations themselves. Now, if we you if we see now uh, what people have done they have tried to express and uh, and then they have tried to plot the two phase multipliers as a function of Lockhart Martinelli parameter for again the four micro channels about which we I have been discussing. And this particular, this particular graph it shows that when the two phase multipliers are plotted if you observe carefully you find that well the Chisholm correlation is not bad for the larger micro channels. But if you observe closely you will find that a mass flux effect is very evident in these micro channels, in the larger micro channels. Well, I would like to tell you that such a mass flux effect has also been reported for larger channels and uh, then again several uh, researchers have tried to incorporate the mass flux effect and give a modified correlation between phi L square and x. We find that such a mass flux effect is very evident in the case of larger micro channels and therefore, this implies that a single value of C is not always very accurate in order to predict the two phase multiplier over the entire range of phase velocities. On the contrary, when we come to smaller channels we find that the mass flux effect is almost not significant or it is not at all important and all the points have collapsed to a single graph in this particular case. 
So, therefore, from here uh, we can understand that uh, there are certain things that we have understood. Firstly, C decreases as channel diameter gets reduced number 1. Number 2, the mass flux effect tends to disappear as we go for smaller micro channels, which again it implies that uh, say in smaller micro channels because of the case of a highly laminar flow of gas and liquid with minimal momentum coupling between the two phases, this possibly happens. And uh, well, with this uh, I have come to the end of the homogeneous flow pattern and I would like to tell you that and uh, again I would like to summarize it in this particular way that the homogeneous flow pattern it is very frequently used for micro channels firstly. The only problem of using homogeneous flow pattern are two. The first thing is to, to find out the acceleration pressure gradient because although it might not be important for adiabatic flows in macro systems, it is quite important in this case. And when you have boiling two phase flows, naturally your acceleration pressure gradient becomes much more important. The other thing is to in order to find out the frictional pressure gradient, there are two one of the two approaches are used either to define a suitable two phase friction factor or you define a two phase multiplier and try to find out the two phase multiplier from some particular relationship with the Lockert and Martinelli parameter, which is a ratio of the single phase pressure drops. And if we are dealing with air water or adiabatic flows with comparable proportion of the two phases, we would adopt phi L square. If we are dealing with boiling two phase flows, we would like to adopt phi L O square. And I have also shown you how phi L square and phi L O square, although both of them refer to single phase frictional pressure drop for the liquid, but they do not lead to the same expression or they are not identical because the mass fluxes are different for the two cases. For phi L square, we assume that the liquid portion of the pipe is flowing alone now. And for phi L O square, we assume that the entire mixture is flowing as liquid. So, with this I complete the homogeneous flow model and in the next class, we will be discussing some amount or rather two types of flow pattern based model. One is the drip flux model, which modifies the homogeneous flow model to account for the slip between the phases and then we go for the slug flow model. So, with this I would like to end today's talk. Thank you very much.